Shut up and sit down. Welcome back, Dakar fans. It is stage 14, our last one in the main rally of this game. Uh, man, this is going to be a little bit shorter. I am currently sitting, I believe, in fifth place. I am 27 minutes behind. Uh, I don't know if we have enough distance to be able to make up that much time. So I am just going to go flat out this entire stage. Uh, make up as much time as I can. We won the last stage. We made up a lot of time, like 30 some minutes, I believe. Yeah, again, I don't, I don't think we have enough, enough distance to make up the time. I, I can't make any navigation mistakes. I can't get any damage. Uh, so let's see what we can do. And you guys, I'd like to, I'd like to make a couple shout outs for some of you guys, my uh, subscribers who have been following me on these Dakar videos. I really appreciate it. I, I really like this game. Uh, you know, so a shout out to uh, our Aussie legend, uh, Sled Till Dead. Um, check out his channel, Sled Till Dead. Um, he has a sweet ass Ducati that he turned into an off-road monster. Um, he is crazy, but man, shout out to you, Sled to Dead. Thanks again for watching me since the beginning on these Dakar videos. I appreciate all your comments and uh, your pointers and, and interesting tidbits that you've given me in the comments. Thanks again. And another shout out to Flatout 111 uh, from the Vital MX forums. Uh, man, you know, he's really passionate about this game also, and uh, he's really encouraged me. He, he encouraged me to make these non-edited full-length videos explaining the navigation on these Dakar. Uh, previously, I was I was editing these videos down because they were so long because I didn't think anybody would want to watch an hour-long video of just somebody riding on the Dakar stage in the game. <laughs> I guess there's some people that do, and uh, man, thanks a lot again, flat out, 11 111. And after this, uh, after this stage, we are moving on to the DLC, to the, the Ruta. Um, we are going to give that one a try. I think I'm going to switch over to Toby Price on the KTM. And we will uh, see how we do on that one. Got a couple double dangers here. You know what that means. Pin it. Let's pin it. See how far we jump right here. Ah, that was a kind of a weak one. We need a triple danger. For anybody, anybody just joining us for the first time uh, watching these Dakar videos, uh, man, I hope you stick around to the end. Um, I mean, you must have clicked on this for a reason. The Dakar is, I mean, again, one of the greatest sporting events, I think, on two and four wheels. Um, you know, these guys have to follow a road book, especially on the motorcycles. It's even more difficult because they're by themselves. They don't have a co-driver. They have to navigate by the roadbook that's on their instrument cluster. Uh, you know, it's, you know, they're doing this all while trying to, while trying to ride these big ass bikes. Well, they're 450s now. Uh, they used to be uh, uh, bigger bikes, uh, the KTMs and the uh, BMW Adventure bikes, uh, the bigger sizes. I don't, I don't remember, did they ride the 990s and, uh, and the 990 KTMs, I think, right? And then what were the Beamers? 1100s or whatever they were I don't remember it's been a few years since they switched to the 450 specification I don't have a lot of news to share on the next game I, I really haven't looked too much I, I take a look at their Facebook and the discord once in a while but I, I haven't seen much other than uh, such till dead let me know they or somebody let me know I don't know if it's like there. Maybe it's flat out. You guys told me that uh, they have switched publishers. Um, so they're working with a new publisher on the next game, which will, I'm assuming, be Dakar uh, 19 for the 2019 edition. 
Uh, so last year's, uh, last January's edition. Um, as far as the real Dakar goes, uh, not a lot of news on that right now. But uh, man, the rumors are still, still coming in for Fernando Alonso, two-time F1 champ, uh, Le Mans champ. Uh, switching to do the Dakar in uh, 2019. Uh, he did a test for Toyota, a two-day test, uh, driving the uh, driving the Hilux. Uh, it was um, supposedly he had a lot of fun doing it. You know, he kind of, there's been rumors that, oh, he's going to return to F1. Uh, those have kind of died down. There's just not really... There isn't room for him right now in a top team, and why would he come back to you know a team that wasn't at the top? Um, nobody's going to make room for him. Uh, and then the Dakar ones, you know, they kind of died down too. You know, he he's never r really run anything off road. He's a circuit racer on road. Uh, you know, we've seen even uh, Carlos Sainz and Sebastian Loeb from the w WRC world. They have. Uh, struggled, you know, it took Carlos Sainz a few years before he won his first Dakar and Sebastian Loeb, he's tried the last four years. He's, he's been, he's literally been the fastest on the stages, uh, but he always runs into problems, either navigation, uh, reliability, uh, getting stuck. Um, so for as fast as he is, he's had some problems, uh, you know, so he, I believe if, if Sebastian Loeb is, is going to enter this next year, I believe he can win it all. Um, ooh, did you see that nice jump over the... Oh, and it still went in the mud. I thought I was going to clear, not even have to worry mud right there. Uh, but I think Sebastian Loeb, he can do it. Uh, but anyways, uh, popped up on social media, I guess Instagram, uh, Alonzo was answering a question about what's next about his career, and he didn't say outright what it's going to be but he said it is going to be something tough uh and it's going to take some time to prepare for it so that's obviously to me he is going to do the dakar and they're just waiting uh you know rumor is toyota they're going to announce something within um the next couple of weeks at least uh to say uh fernando alonso is going to actually run the dakar Yeah, so he, he needs a few months to prepare. Like, like I said, he's never run off-road. Uh, so he even has a leg down on the uh, the rally drivers, the WRC drivers that came over. Uh, I, I really believe Fernando could really learn how to drive these cars. He's a, I mean, he's a world-class driver. Uh, so he's got that. He knows how to adapt and drive these drive different types of vehicles. He's, he's run Indy. He's run uh, Le Mans. Uh, he's just going to have to really adapt to the off-road. Uh, and that's just going to come from seat time, really being able to anticipate, you know, uh, he's not looking at the road per se, but really anticipate the conditions, the environments, uh, what's coming up. Uh, you know, to be able to handle that, you know, reading the dunes and be able to, to go through the dunes and not get stuck. Uh, so... We'll see. Um, you know, I guess somebody said their expectation would be close to the top 10 for him. Um, he's definitely not going to win, um, in my opinion. Uh, but hopefully this is the first year of uh, Alonzo. One of many until he can uh, compete for victories. Right, so this has been a twisty, twisty, uh, twisty road we're going on. It, uh, a lot of T's and Y's, um, trying to, trying to hit, not too difficult on the navigation. Uh, haven't really had any problems. I'm sure. The problem with the twisties on this game, again, if you're new to this game, uh, for watching for the first time, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. The physics in this game are some of the worst that you'll you'll play <laughs> as far as motorcycles go. I think even the cars are kind of crappy. 
Uh, but as the motorcycles go, if you've ever played MX versus ATV, any of the milestone motocross or supercross games, uh, these physics are just pretty terrible. Uh, so it makes it really hard on these roads. Uh, the brakes, when you hit the brakes, uh, they're terrible. They just seem to lock up. Um, I think you can adjust something in the settings, but yeah, see, ooh. Uh, but again, don't, don't discount the game because of the crappy physics. If I'm assuming you're watching this because you've heard of the Dakar before or you want to learn about it. Uh, but the Dakar, you know, the main draw of it, at least in this game to me, is the navigation and the environments. I mean, the environments are huge. It's 132nd scale. So in this one, we're going a hundred and some kilometers. Uh, so you'll see the kilometers tick by kind of fast there. That's just because it's going at a, a 132nd scale pace. But the environment, the navigation, having to use your head to try to, you know, read that road book. Uh, the first, the very first stage I did, if you go back and watch my video, it took me like 14 minutes to, uh, to finish the stage. When in reality, if you knew what you're doing, it, it takes like four minutes or, or less, I think, to finish that first stage. Um, you know, from there, I got better at just reading that road book, you know. Looking at your cap heading at the top, which, uh, oh man, some mud here. Try to avoid that center. There we go. Just trying to, uh, get your navigation done. With all the roads, like these later stages have been a, a lot of navigation on roads. Uh, not a lot of open terrain. So I just clicked on my headlights to help out. Uh, so it's been a little easier on the roads, but the first, man, four or five stages, they are out in the sand dunes. Uh, so you really have to stay on your heading and, uh, try to find those, those waypoints out in the desert. They're really fun. Again, if you're a fan of the Dakar, this tries to convey some, some of that. Um, so let's hope, you know, in the next game they can, I mean, they can only improve the physics. <laughs> I know, I think they've said, the developers have said they're, they are working, they're going to work on that. Uh, but they can only improve them. So it's almost like, oh, almost went off there. If they can improve even the physics 20%, it'll be a huge improvement, uh, to playability in this game. One other thing they have to fix is the AI, I think. The AI, uh, you won't see them here because I am leading the stage, but when you pull up on another AI rider, they just pull over for you. Uh, they just go really slow. And I've said before, I think they did that because they do not want you to be able to follow the AI. Oh. Which I think is wrong because in the real Dakar, people follow each other all the time and you never know if the guy you're following is going the right way so that's that's what i think they should mix it up make the ai have problems have them get lost also and then you'll get lost if you try to follow them if you're not following your roadbook closely enough there's a lot of roads to cut around on here So again, I have been going flat out. We'll see what I can do. Uh, I am about five waypoints ahead of my teammate, uh, Juan Bereda. We will see what we do. I don't, again, I don't think it's too short of a stage for me to make up 37 minutes. I don't, I don't think Juan is in the lead right now. He's, he's like right ahead of me in the standing. So even if I beat him by quite a bit, um, that's good that he's in second right now because that means that I am also leading the other riders that are in front of him. Uh, very close to being done here, though. Three more kilometers and we will be done. It's been a great rally. Uh, I took a lot of penalties on stage five. That's what I've been make, working my way up to for the uh, <laughs> remainder of the rally. 
Um, let's see how close we did to at least getting on the podium. There we go, guys. Stage complete. Last one of the main rally. 1433. No penalties. Let's see where that puts us. Right, 14. We beat Juan. I forget who's in the lead. Sunderland might be. We only picked up 10 minutes on him. All right, let's. Overall, yep. Overall, we are 18 minutes behind. We we ended up and just one minute off of the podium. Oh man, that was so close. All right, we're taking a look at the little uh, video video that they play at the end. You can look at uh, the Dakar podium. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit me a like. Leave me some comments and be ready for the uh, the Ruda DLC coming soon.